of America. Like virus. You get so much information from the media about the US. So the curiosity is universal. And um, I think the marketing of the United States outside of the United States is very successful. There is the perception that uh, money grows on trees. You know, I have this story of, uh, of a Nigerian who came out from JFK and uh, all of a sudden he found this $100 bill that uh, somebody had dropped and he picked it up. He said, oh God, what did I say? You know? That dollar is so almighty in the eyes of Africa that everybody wants to come and think it's so easy when you get here. That's the first thing that changes. The reality of that America is not what you thought it was. That, that yeah, poverty is here. And I have to sort of rethink my strategy. I have to rethink who I am. Now I have to hustle in a different way, right? I have to work two or three jobs to really make this thing work. In that sense, again, uh, you have to remake yourself. You have to some, sometimes pretend that everything is okay. Because if you went home and, <laughs> and, and, and told people how, how difficult it was, people, you wouldn't be believed anyway. Uh, because people can't believe, how can you be the great America and, and claim that you can't make it? It's like going to the gold mine and coming out with nothing in your pockets. When I got here in October of 1984, you know it's a cold month and never had winter. When the winter cold hit me, I said, whoa! They say it's cold, I don't know it was going to be this cold. That was the first shock. But then as soon as I walk out, I am start seeing a little, we'll get to the neighborhood, I start seeing garbage, like, like, like garbage bags. I said, what do you mean, this is America, I thought there's no garbage in the street. And then the reality starts setting. Yeah, if you don't have money, it's not going anywhere. Now, I can't do this because I don't have this, I can't do that, I can't do that. I said, but wait a minute, I thought America is just this country when you come here with all your troubles are over. It's like when your troubles start. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be left or right? Far left or near left? Okay, here. All right. Y you know, New York, it's uh, a kind of city that uh, everybody aspires to live in. You know, growing up as a child, you know, you watch Hollywood movies, and everybody talks so great about New York. You keep thinking about this city day and night. It's like a daydream. You know, wherever you go, you wish one day you just get opportunity, you know, get in the plane and find yourself in New York City and enjoy all the good things everybody talks about. But when you get here, it turns to be a different story. <laughs> you understand? Right, it turns to be a different story. But then you cannot go back home with an empty hand. I've been in the States for about 10 years. It's been a while, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> you know, basically I came to America to go to college. I came to America to go to college. It is, um, you, you hope to achieve something and go back home. But um, once again, it's unpredictable, you know. I, I don't think I'm the only African immigrant in America with this experience. You know, we had a whole lot of Africans driving a cab and um, we drive the taxi not because we we love it. This is a business of stress. When we get out here driving around, buzzing our damn ass, sitting on our goddamn balls for the next 12, 13 hours, we want complete peace of mind. <laughs> and it's a beautiful day, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it is a beautiful day. But it is a very tough city, especially when it comes to money, you know, and um, you always got to do what you got to do to survive. Yeah, you have to work. You have to work like uh, you have to work. Well, this is the toughest town. 
in this country. I have to tell you, uh, uh, this is the, it's just like a proving ground. My first step in New York, the next day I got a job as a dishwasher. So I went for training, they didn't know about machine dishwasher. I never even see it all my life. <laughs> and so it was Friday night. Friday we the restaurant running like crazy. And the, the, my boss was yelling. <laughs> Said the plates and stuff got to be ready for the waiter. you like, wow. Okay, and that's America. Oh, shit. Okay, let's go. And so he yelled me for a while. If it's gonna be like this, um, I think I'm gonna look for uh, another guy, Mexican or whatever, tomorrow. I said, what? I think Mexican uh, can work like me. What are you talking about? So I went out, smoke, cigarette, whatever, come back. Always the number one. They say it's like a brrr, pam pam. All the play, a thousand plays came, million to finish. <laughs> I have to keep that job, you know, my first job in New York, so I was happy as well. One of the uh, biggest adjustments for most people, possibly, is to understand that until the weekend, you're pretty much on your own. Monday to Friday, uh, you don't see anybody, except maybe co-workers or fellow students. Uh, people work two or three jobs, so work so hard. When they come back, they just are getting ready for the next day. And I've talked to people who, a month after they come here, they're going, no, I'm not going to live here. I can, I can, I can live like this. I can't live like this. But you know what? They will continue living here. Because at the end of the month, when they get the paycheck, they translate that into reality, into Ghanaian cities. Suddenly, someone will realize, even though I'm scrubbing toilets, I'm doing all these menial jobs, but this money I've made in a month, is a lot of money.